Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talked to Sean Stevens about what he's been doing after retiring from Vendo. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Sean Stevens, Jason Bronner, and Katie Joyce. Hey, gang, what's up? Hi. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. So, yeah, we've yeah. talked to Sean before about his career and uh, you know what he's doing at Vendo. He is now retired from Vendome, and now we're going to ask him what's going on. And do you ever really retire, retire from the bourbon industry, or are you some time off between bourbon gigs? So we'll talk to him about you know what he's been up to, what his future plans all are, and all that kind of stuff. We'll get to that after the break. For right now, Becca said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, Becca? So I want to know, and this can go, up, we're going to go two ways with it. So what was there in your house? What was the design something a design option that either you got vetoed out of or you had a veto in your own house like no we're absolutely not doing that or you tried to get your wife to sign on and she said absolutely not i want to know what was turned down in your house steve was saying one before yeah i I mean i could share that story even even though i just shared the story that uh, that was just with this group was off the air so I, um, Jim Fosnott uh, is a friend of mine and, and I, you may know Jim. He's been, he's on these shows a lot. If you check out his Instagram, he did a, a barrel stave wall, which looks unbelievable. It's in his uh, basement and it just looks really, really nice. And I showed it to the warden, uh, AKA the wife. And I said, you know, I, cause we're, we're in the process. We're, as a matter of fact, everything's down. We are waiting for our buddy to put in a hardwood floor. I don't really do that stuff. So, uh, as soon as he gets that in, then we're going to start putting this room back together. And I said, you know, we're at the perfect time. We got this, the, the room's emptied out and, uh, it's going to be bourbon themed. It's going to be for all my bourbon friends that come into town and it's a place they can stay. And, uh, just for free, it's a, it's a bourbon themed, uh, you know, um, room. And I said, what about one of those barrel stave walls in there? How great would that be? Like the main wall as you walk in. And she said, no, she said, uh, no, and she said, and I said, it looks so great. She says, yeah, it looks great. Why don't you work on something downstairs in the basement? Uh, you know, like Jim's got his in the basement and she says, he's probably got the basement for a reason. And you put that, that's a basement thing. And I said, I, I don't, I, but it was bourbon theme. And should, I couldn't win my appeal. I, I lost. So <laughs> I, I, I took it. I, I lost at the, at the regular level. Then I appealed, but it's also the problem is the same person who's ruling at the, at the lower uh, levels is also ruling at the higher level. So uh, yeah. maybe we have a, a flawed system. Katie knows the legal system better than me, but uh, the, usually that you don't have the same person ruling at multiple levels, but that's what I have to deal with. So yeah, I got shut down. Yeah. <laughs> That's not uh, right. It was a, it was a pool always- table, pool table in the basement here. Oh got, yeah. Got, yeah. Got that. That was a no go. And I, <laughs> and I couldn't figure out whether it was because she doesn't like to play pool or whether it was the remembering getting the free ping pong table, taking four or five of us to get it into the basement. Me and the kids played on it for probably a week. And then it was a laundry hamper for maybe a year and a half till I gave it away to somebody else. Yeah. So, so once that was the pool table, it was like, no, yeah, uh, and there it could be a lot of reasons for that too. Yeah, what, it, what about- it wasn't even something I even had to discuss. I knew that no was the no, the no. <laughs> there was no, 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 even a further appeal. You knew that was, no, uh, no, that was final. That's the no. Yeah. 
Yeah. It also could play into, let's not forget when you're playing pool, typically you're drinking. So maybe she's thinking about now I'm going to have a bunch of drunk people hanging out here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe that was, that played into it, Sean. We don't know. God, we do don't. you imagine how much whiskey I've got to move out of the basement to put a pool table in there yeah. now? Yeah, pool table takes up a lot of room. That's for sure. That's for sure. All right, uh, Jason, have you ever had anything that uh, that you were told no to? You can't. Uh, you can't do this. I think more of uh, my no would be like buying cars and shit. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, I don't think that I got told no for anything in the house. Hell, I'm never home. <laughs> <laughs> Here is the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Blink oh. twice if you're saying this under duress. Yeah. <laughs> Give me those hand signals over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, Counting uh, down your time. Yeah, yeah, I think it was more vehicles than any kind of house thing. Okay. Okay. You got turned down on vehicles, but you you have some cool vehicles, so you've gotten some things approved through the years. Yeah. Well, yeah. those were those were pre. <laughs> right. <laughs> So Most you're not the type to just buy and be like, hey, surprise, look what I bought. Because uh, I've had some friends do that, and that doesn't end well sometimes. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. usually. I mean, um, our, our buddy Lenny from Deerhammer bought a motorcycle, and man, he got in so much trouble for that. Oh, yeah. It, it, Here's the real story. Okay. Yeah. We went and test drove a new Bronco. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. They told me, like, yeah, I like it. It's pretty cool. So the next day, he goes, well, I guess I'm going to go out there. And I go, go out where? And he goes, I'm going to go out and order that Bronco. And I was like, what? He <laughs> <laughs> <I mean, laughs> thought he had your buy-in by just taking you out there for the test drive. So he, it, was, it was the presumptive close, as they say, back in my yeah, uh, yeah. days. The presumptive close. It didn't work, though. He got caught. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. When you hear the, hear the what, and you're like, oh, oh, did you hear? Did you hear Bronco? Um, <laughs> <I meant. laughs> All right, Katie, how about you? So you ever uh, ever get in a situation? I have to say, one of the best things about being divorced is that I have complete control over the right. entire thing. Right. Uh, <laughs> and it's been interesting though having to self regulate. Uh, before I end up with just uh -huh. a wall of whiskey in the living room, I had to step back and say. You know, maybe we only keep the nice bottles in this china cabinet I have and put the other you know, hundred bottles downstairs. So uh, but it has been right. yeah. wonderful that I can do whatever I want with whatever I want. Okay. By that it's airplanes and whiskey and firearms everywhere. And <laughs> this really would be the <laughs> That's it's been fantastic. So yes, it's not uh, not a not bad. It doesn't sound like a bad time. Whiskey, firearms, and, and as we were sitting there, sure I reached habit. to yeah. the side and pulled out some refrigerated Girl Scout cookies, and then oh. from my computer station. So yeah, I gotta yeah. say, having complete control over how to set up a house, I'm yeah. not sure I'll ever give up this power now. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, in the last couple of years, we uh, Girl Scout cookies. It's funny you bring up because in the last couple of years, we've decided. Uh, each individual buys their own Girl Scout cookies, does not share. And that, because we would just Whoa. buy them collectively for the house and then be like, wait a minute, you ate all those? I didn't get any. So all, now yeah. I buy my Girl Scout cookies, she buys hers, and that's it. I never, I know, yeah. believe me, I would not so bold. I never, you know, open up one of her boxes anymore, but she respects <laughs> that. It's, never ate any it, mine, it's, so it's, it's, it's a lot to do with it's six dollars a bo box. Oh, yeah. Too. yeah like, oh, so whoa, whoa. Yeah. Oh, you're eating my. How much those cost? How right. many tag alongs did you just put how down? How much of my pension yeah. went to my cookies? Right. right. You have to have your own. That uh, Becca, as a newlywed, we're, I'll give you that piece of advice when it comes to Girl Scout cookies. Buy your own, each buy your, buy own, your own, and then that's that's, that's, that, that's going to make for a harmonious relationship. So, yeah. I'll remember that. Now, Becca, did you ever, have you ever been in a situation where, uh, and this could be either way, either you've had to avoid something Royce wanted or you know, vice versa, because we're telling stories either way. Is there, I, I do the, the, uh, vetoing. Okay. Um, <laughs> makes sense. When we were building the house, Royce, um, so we have these fantastic large windows, uh, all across the very front of the house. They're big, beautiful windows. Um, and Royce was like, well, those are the only windows that we're putting in the house. And I went, what? 
He's like, well, that's like all the windows. Yeah. We're not doing any other windows. That that's the windows. And I'm like, for one, no. For two, that's not even legal to do because you have to have a window in like every bedroom. But I'm like, like, why would we not have windows? Like, I thought that these were going to be all of our windows. I thought that was your design. And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, what do we even need other windows for? Now he's very happy that we have a plethora of windows in the house. Yeah, other we had cross we freezes and all kinds of stuff. He yeah, thought yeah. that he was just going to have to pay for the front windows, but he had to pay for a entire house full of windows. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it sounds like I, I agree with you. You you did the right thing <laughs> overruling that one. Yeah, that's good. He was fine with zero windows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you could uh, sh- shoot a quick uh, email over to the warden and say, man, I think that the wall idea is good, Becca, that, that would help. We're still in a situation where it's empty and it would be easy to fix right now. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I've done a lot for you. <laughs> I've done a lot for you. Uh, that would be nice. All right. Guess what, gang? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Jason. Jason, what do you got there, man? Well, once again, I'm going to stay with this Michter's American whiskey. We'll see what okay. the unblended, see what happens. I put some more juice in there. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Not much there. Uh, Katie, you're next. Jason's right. got the lead with that little squeaky pop he just had there. What, what, what do you got? I've got some Walker's K that we're drinking okay. today. All right. St. Louis is on Walker's K. I love the microphone move. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. And that was decent. Not great. It could be beat, but it is certainly enough to take the lead right now. So, uh, so there's the lead. Next up is Sean. I'm going to have a Balvenie Doublewood 12 year old. Okay. Okay. No, not enough. Not enough. Katie's got the lead. Becca, what do you got? I've got just another sample of our four-year-old bourbon. Okay. No, no pork pop there. Uh, Katie, I think you're going to win this thing. I've got some hard truth here. I've got uh, their sweet mash rye, which is fantastic. Is that my hard truth that I'm winning? Coolest cork. That's a natural cork. Look at that thing. That That is is a really cool cork. That's awesome. All right. Cork pop. That was was good. That was good. Not enough, though. Not enough. I feel like if you count a factor of like that, the bottle's been well used already. That true. It was pretty good. True. If there was any, yeah. If I got some points for stuff like that, uh, clearly I won. But I, we do not do that. So, Katie, you win. Cheers. 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 All right. We're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, it's going to be Sean time. We're going to be talking to him about his career, uh, his retirement, and what the heck he's doing now. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S., Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thieves Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky.
Hi, this is Rick Brenner, and you are listening to the Bourbon Daily. Shouldn't it be the legend? Yeah, maybe. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking to Sean Stevens about his retirement. Okay. Sean, before we get into retirement talk, I'm going to kick this thing off, and everyone's going to ask you questions here, but I'll kick it off with just a little career summary. Tell us how long you worked for Vendome, what exactly was your role there, and then when specifically did you retire? I started at Vendome in January of 2011. Okay. I've been a union sheet metal worker since 1978. All right. Yeah, Um, that's good. Last uh, 11 years of my career was at Vendome, probably the best 11 years. Mm -hmm. Um, My job was specifically in the stainless steel area, not because I couldn't weld copper, but I was a much better stainless welder than I was a copper welder. So Vendome kind of would um, uh, pick up on your your good points and use them a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, when I first started, Jason was working with me right next to me and we pretty much worked on the smaller tanks, thousand uh-huh. gallon, uh, 500 gallon, uh, big enough to climb into climb out of eight, nine foot tops, uh, when you put the legs on it. And I kind of graduated from there into the big stuff, 10,000 gallon stainless tanks, 15,000 gallon tanks, things that were, 40 and 60 feet long and 12 foot in diameter. Um, Once my back got as bad as it was when I came back from my first surgery, they put me on a table, smaller table, and I worked on the heads for condensers and some of the smaller stainless pieces. Nothing really big enough to where it would hurt me ever again. So about the last five years I was there uh, was pretty much small tabletop stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and how's the back today? Because, you know, dealing with back, back is issues, terrible. <laughs> that's is it, why is I'm it retired. bad still? It's still bad. Yeah, that's why I'm retired. But, There's but, absolutely no way that I could go back to it at all. Not so, even for uh, the, the union allows you to work 39 hours a month and continue to get your pension. Yeah. And there's no way. I mean, I go through. So, so it, it continues to be, even though you're not, you're not of the grind of doing any, you know, the work and stuff like that in retirement, it's still, still back, still bothering Yeah, The arthritis that is sucks. real bad. That sucks, man. I'm yeah. Sorry, the, the arthritis is bad enough to where I'm either a couple of months away from getting my disability social security or having to get a lawyer to get my disability mm-hmm. social security. I've been working on the paperwork with social security since September. Yeah. And yeah. Um, oh, that paperwork's a nightmare. No. Uh, they tell you online that it's uh, like for be prepared for two to two and a half hours. It was five weeks. Wow. Yeah, oh, it man. was five weeks of paperwork. <laughs> and this five was weeks of paperwork. This, yeah, and no. this was two to two to four hours a day. Yeah. On paperwork and going through doctor's records. And um I don't think I'm gonna have any trouble. Uh the first time since probably 2014, I saw an x-ray last month, social security x-rays. And um, I saw an x-ray of what my lower back looks like. And your back's not supposed to bend in that direction. Yeah. So I really don't see going back to work. Right. Um, sitting, if you notice, after about a half an hour, I start doing a little more scooching around. Fidgeting. Sitting for yeah. half an hour hurts. Standing for more than 10 or 15 minutes really hurts. If I could get a job uh, testing shoes, I can walk forever. Mm-hmm. And okay. for whatever reason, I can just walk forever. And I do, I walk between four and eight miles a day, every day, wow. just because it, just because it feels better than either standing or sitting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, like I say, if I could get a job with Zappos, I'd go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Zappos. If you're listening, uh, yeah, give Sean a call. Uh, if you can't get a hold of him, go through us. We'll, we'll get it. He's the right person. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Katie, what do you want to know about uh retired life in the bourbon industry? The, so I, would like to know if, there, if there's like retirement projects, is there anything that kind of just like sparks your imagination of you're like, well, with this extra time I have like pie in the sky ideas you have about like retirement projects you'd maybe want to do. Yeah, I've got, um, it took me a while to find one. I don't know whether any of you ha- are, are, have ever looked for an anvil. Uh-huh. I mean, that's pretty much the basis of a, of a hand shop is an anvil. Right. They're yeah. not cheap. <laughs> no, yeah. They really are not cheap. 
Well, I found one back in December at one of the um, thrift stores here in town. If you can believe that, it was at a thrift store. Okay. And it's not a full size anvil. It's just a tabletop anvil. And <laughs> it was it was really inexpensive. So the anvil's in the garage. So starting this summer, I'll be back doing some whiskey thieves and things like copper funnels. Stuff okay. that I can do in the cool. garage that, that doesn't take a lot. Um, and then we'll get you a little walking, walking treadmill by the table so you can yeah. be walking while you're yeah. doing it. I'm working. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but I can grab you one. Yeah. So I like the fact I'm I'm gonna mute Jason here because real quick he's having a conversation. I like the fact uh that you are able to do those things because you are an artist. I, I mean I know you had a, a you know big job at Vendome and doing those things, but you know, working in metal and creating things is something that uh that you have the ability to do. So I'm glad that you were able to do that. And hopefully, hopefully yeah. you're able to, to do that for friends, family. Uh, maybe, maybe to get to the point where you could start selling some of that stuff and maybe a little side income, a little side hustle, it's, as you say, if, would be cool. if it comes down to that, it, it would be because I didn't know who, who the person was. If somebody just mm -hmm. called me out of the blue and said, Hey, I, 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 I'd like a whiskey thief. I saw a whiskey thief that you made and I don't know this person. I would probably give him a price. I'm right. not real sure what that would be. Right. Um, I know that. You find a whiskey thief in gift shop at Heaven Hill, and they want between two hundred and four hundred dollars for them. And I, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, most of the stuff that I've done um, have always been gifts. Yeah, um, stuff for Alan and stuff for um, uh, Lisa Wicker. Sure, Lisa's great. Yeah, Alan's awesome. So yeah, that was a good combination. A couple of good folks. Those are doing the only two things. customer customers I've ever had. <laughs> At least said Alan. Okay. All right. Uh, Becca, what do you want to know from Sean? Uh, my first question is uh, when you go into retirement, what time is the uh, appropriate time to start having a cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. And well, is there an appropriate time or a time where you're that's, like, you're, that's like, that's like asking me if there's a barbecue season. No, <laughs> not really. That, yeah. that see th this is the things I want to know. Yeah. Well, at, in retirement, no, I will tell you from being self-employed for about six years, uh, once in between some jobs at in sheet metal, um, that if you start drinking around 10 in the morning, you don't get a lot done after one in the afternoon. No. Yeah. Yeah, this the is true. The second thing I learned was I'm I'm a very good cook. My wife and I have owned a catering business before, and I'm a very good cook. My refrigerator is only about 10 feet away from me, and it's full of a lot of good food that I've made. Man, you can pick up some weight real quick. You've heard of fr freshman freshman pounds? Right. Retirement, yeah. retirement pounds suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because you got like the slower a, metabolism too. I, your like metabolism <laughs> goes through just drops to that nothing. That would make sense. That's good. You're moving though. Now you're, you, you're, now you you're, know why I walk four to eight miles a day. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise I would fill this this frame up. Yeah. Hey, it's Sean Stevens. I'm retired. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't do anything, you fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Sean, it sounds like you're, you're, you're happily retired. It sounds like, you know, you've got some physical issues that uh, won't allow you to go back to do what you did, but is there any potential for like consulting? I, I mean, obviously, you know, the distilling equipment and all that you've put it together at that level there there's room in this business. There's enough distilleries out there that there could be need for someone who, who consults about how it works. And I'm having some issues and stuff like that. Is that something that you would consider? Probably not without getting into some legal semantics with the contract that I signed with the union 35 years okay. ago. Okay. Um, there's not a lot I can help you with without giving away trade, not trade secrets, but giving away things that my trade really feels maybe I shouldn't tell everybody in the world. Right. Um, I'm not real sure what would happen from it. Um, as, as for the distilling of it, I would probably refer you to somebody like Lisa Wicker or Alan Bishop, mm -hmm. somebody that'd been doing it uh, a lot more than the four or five days that I've worked at Mount Vernon. I mean, yeah. I do know how to make whiskey, but I wouldn't give you advice on how to make it. Okay. Um, 
What about uh, what about like a, a, a Sean Stevens I've considered experience? Being a welding like, in, okay, welding stuff. Okay. Yeah, I bet. Well, I've considered being a welding inspector. Uh huh. Um, once again, uh, because of the union and the contract that I signed years ago, I would probably have to start paying uh, dues again and give up some of my pension. Um, right. I'm not prepared to do that. Okay. As long okay. as I'm working out of my garage and giving stuff away for free. They don't care. Okay. Uh, I, and and the, the good part about all the years that I spent that that made me as physically debilitated as I am, I got a pretty good pension. So I really don't have to go Don't want to mess it up. I get it. All right. I'm going to take one last crack at this and see if I can get you back in the workforce. This one is the Sean Stevens experience. It's, uh, it's tours where you go to distilleries and you focus on the equipment and, uh, and what, what they're trying to do with it, what makes it special. Uh, maybe even because you may be involved in building the particular still, you can tell them some of the, the cool little functions and features. And you think right away, you may think there's no need for this. And then you got to remember, this is bourbon where there are people that want to know every last aspect of bourbon. Every they want something a little bit different take. Detail. Yeah. They want to know every last detail. They want a yep. different take on a tour and stuff like that. And you might add something that's just, different enough where there could be interest out there and again it's it involved walking and stuff like that it sounds like stuff you could do it's not it's not the, the work that we talked about before maybe may, would, would you consider that i have considered um being a, a college lecturer okay and i I've, I've given uh, i've given two lectures at uh new mexico state university Okay. On the hist on the history of distilling equipment and Vendome, um, I've given uh, hour and a half discussion on the history of distilling equipment at Vendome for the Bourbon Brotherhood. I really like doing that one. Cool. And do any of you know who Rachel McNeil from Isla, Scotland, is? She I don't. Does a, yeah. He does a, a she does a school every October, and she runs tours on the island of Isla. And she contacted me a couple of months ago and she interviewed me for probably two and a half hours. And she's going to use some of the stuff I talked about in her classes in October. So I've always considered wanting to maybe be a college lecturer. Okay. Now okay. a good part about that is, is the gentleman that's in charge of the, the new James B beam Institute at UK university of Kentucky which will be the only college in the country that has a working distillery on campus, um, not just teaching classes, right. is I'm going to talk to him about once every semester coming down and doing a class. Nice. That's cool. So, yeah, you, you've you got some things in the works. Son. Yeah, so yeah. Some things that you're looking at. So yeah, that's I'm, cool. st I've, I'm still writing. Haven't yeah. gotten anything published in a while, but I'm still writing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jason, uh, Jason was, hey, uh, Jason's been going. Uh, here he is. Here he is. Sorry. Oh. He was on for a second. Jason, you're still on mute. So oh, there you go. Hey, okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm just looking for my whiskey. You know, <laughs> working you alongside moved. a guy for a couple of years. You know, I'm a pretty good friend. Thank you. Get on the list. There. <laughs> so, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Jason said you're me. on the list. You're on the list. He's on the list. So perfect. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Sean, you know, congratulations on, you know, an amazing you. career and, uh, you know, great job at, uh, Vendome and, you know, one, you know, it's very cool that, uh, that you have that. And it sounds like life is pretty, pretty good for you. I know you're dealing with some, some, uh, you know, the, the back and that's, that's never any fun. I get that, but, uh, it sounds like you're still, you know, busy doing things and thinking about the future and what, what might Can't be stop. next. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's cool. Union sheet metal workers have a bad habit of dying when they stop, so I don't ever plan on stopping. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, well, we'll wrap this show up like we do every other one by talking about where people can find us. Katie, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me over on Instagram at Katie Proof. All right, Sean. You can find me on Instagram at Professor Brownbag and Facebook at um, The Copper Onion. All right, Jason. I'm on Instagram. I'm the Bluegrass Bourbon Baron. <laughs> 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 
All right. We'll, uh, we'll let that one go. All right. Miss Becca Sue, how about you? Where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, one K no C's. All right. For me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Cheers. See ya. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.